their quarterback embodies their spirit. I think we carry kind of a quiet confidence, which is very good in my opinion. But also we go out and work hard every day in practice, and, and we don't feel that we're a good enough football team that we, can't just, that we can just show up and beat people. In Tom Landry's shadow, no longer the new Cowboy coach has infused this team of success, and with it an image. I think it helps your football team if you can not only play with a lot of confidence, but have a little bit of a swagger about you. There will be no shortage of swagger tonight. Deion Sanders of the Falcons will strut his stuff in prime time. The Cowboys look to clinch the NFC East as they play the Atlanta Falcons on ABC's Monday Night Football. And the Falcons will put the ball in the air, so we'll wait to see Sanders as Norm Johnson will kick off. Clayton Holmes and Kelvin Martin are back for the Dallas Cowboys. At the six-yard line, Kelvin Martin, one of the top return specialists in the league, but he runs smack into a black shirt. Number 38 for the Atlanta Falcons, Keith Jones. And Jones pays the price as he comes up, cradling his left wrist. For the Dallas Cowboys, Troy Aikman really coming into his own. Fourth season, number one pick in the entire league in 89 out of UCLA. Smith and Johnston, the running backs. Johnston, the blocker. Irvin and Harper, great wideouts. Novacek, a terrific tight end. Two and a, Newton, Stepnowski, Gisek, and Eric Williams. Big Eric Williams up front. Outstanding offensive line. Emmett Smith, flag down. And Smith, for the moment, gets a first down. It's a gain of 14 out to the 32-yard line. But let's see about the flag, which was thrown at the 19-yard line. The referee tonight is Larry Nemers, and that one's going to come back. Illegal motion, number 80, five yards, repeat first down. That's Alvin Harper whistled for the penalty. Falcons play a base 3-4. Gardner, Epps, and Barnett are up front. Good quartet of linebackers. Tippin, Solomon is a former Cowboy. Tuggle makes a lot of tackles. And Connor on the outside. McKire, the longtime 49er. And Dolphin with Sanders. Donaldson and Case are the safeties. On first and 15, Aikman's first pass of the night. Finds the secondary doing its job, and then he just throws it away. Alvin Harper coming back toward the line of scrimmage. The pass is incomplete. It'll be second and 15. And credit Deion Saunders with the first big play for the Falcons tonight. He was man-for-man -man coverage on Michael Irving, the gifted receiver of the Dallas Cowboys. He was on him like glue. You saw Aikman look over to him. Nothing happening. He could do nothing with it, and he had to run out of the pocket. Second and 15 for the Dallas Cowboys. 11 and 3 on the year. Here tonight and then home to close out the regular season next Sunday against Chicago. That's Irvin in motion. And on a delay, it's Emmett Smith through the middle where he gets most of his yardage. They run him between the tackles a lot. Jesse Solomon makes the hit after a gain of close to five. It'll be third and ten. Now, we didn't have a chance to discuss the many injuries of this defensive unit for the Atlanta Falcons, but they have people playing in all kinds of different positions tonight. There is Smith being taken there by Jesse Solomon and Jesse Tuggle, but they have lost three defense key defensive linemen over the course of the season. They are small up front, they are inexperienced, and Dallas certainly should be able to exploit them on the ground. Third and ten, three wide out in this Dallas set. And Aikman steps up, and the catch is made by Novacek. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Novacek is close to what would be a first down, but a marker back at the 18-yard line. And again, it's against Dallas. For their second motion penalty of this opening series. Remember the one to Alvin Harper on the first play of the game, and now this one brings back what appears to be a first down catch by Novacek. Jerry Glanville in his third year as the Falcons head coach. Motion, in his number 79, moving before the snap. Five yards, repeat third down. I always thought that moving before the snap was a false start. 
In this particular instance, the officials are choosing to call it motion right there. The guy closest to us, that's Eric Williams, the right tackle. And he starts out of there early, but that's, that's a false start, not motion. When you uh, simulate the start of a play before the snap of the ball, the penalty is the same. It's a five-yard penalty. And it makes it third and 15 on the game's opening drive. Cowboys at their own 13. Falcons still blitz, and here they come, and it's a run. And it's Emmett Smith who gets out to the 19-yard line, considerably short of the first down. Darian Connor gets credit for the tackle, and the Dallas Cowboys will be forced to punt. Connor having a good year for Atlanta. He has seven sacks, six of them in the last game, last seven games. But Atlanta going with three down linemen and six DBs in their nickel defense. Well, Dallas Frank is making it tough on themselves. They're not only playing Atlanta, but they're playing themselves with two penalties on the opening drive. That's, that is exactly the wrong way that a coach like Jimmy Johnson wants to see his club start when they are favored. Mike Saxon to kick, Tony Smith back to get it. Good punt, great punt, 56 yards, taken at the 24-yard line, and Smith returns it six to the 30. The tackle is made by Mickey Pruitt. So let's take a look now at the Falcons. And again, as you look at Wade Wilson, keep in mind that Chris Miller went to the Pro Bowl for them as their quarterback last year. Hurt in midseason, they went with Billy Joe Tolliver, and now the longtime Viking Wilson coming off a five-touchdown performance. They start with Steve Broussard in the backfield with the four wideouts, Ryzen, Hill, Pritchard, and Haynes, and from time to time, Deion Sanders. Then you've got Ken, Hoover, Dukes, Freilich, and Hinton, a very experienced but banged up offensive line. First and 10, Atlanta at the 31. Wilson right to the air, over the middle. First down, Pritchard, he loses the football, and they say it is a live ball, which means it is a Dallas ball. Ken Norton dislodged it, and Thomas Everett picked it up. Well, from up here, it certainly looked like he took a couple of steps with the ball, which establishes possession. I think Atlanta might have been arguing that he was down when the ball came out. Well, there's no question they're yeah. arguing that. I think, first of all, it's beyond question that it was a completed pass. I think where Atlanta's questioning it, let's watch it right from left to right. There's the catch. He has possession. Oh, and the ball comes out when he is on the ground. That that play should have been dead right there. At least from that angle. It, the it, ruling it on the to field me. is that the runner never hit the ground and the ball popped loose. First down. Well, the call goes against the Falcons. And from that angle, it certainly looks like Atlanta was uh, the uh, recipient of a bad break. From the official's point of view, at full speed, it looked as if though he landed on Ken Norton and that was the ruling that they mm -hmm. made yep. and they're not going to change it and again defensively for Dallas six defensive backs and it paid off for him there he obviously hit the ground before we've, we've got an official uh, off the field who appears to be down let's look at his right knee here and see if it goes down oh well, there's no question it's down yeah see right there the play is over but obviously we're watching it in a in a freeze frame slow-mo you can see when he came down on top of the defender, that's what the officials rule. That's what he's ruling. Let me ask you a question. A guy comes down on another guy. Don't you interpret it as the defensive player being part of the ground? The play is over at right. that point in time. <laughs> well, why, hey, Dallas, they're used to this sort of stuff at the 35-yard line, except this one works in their favor. And this is Darian Connor making sure that Emmett Smith has no place to run. Darian Connor, third-year man out of Jackson State, the school that produced Walter Payton. They use him in a lot of ways. They use him as a down lineman. And what they are doing, the Atlanta Falcons, with all the injuries, particularly that defensive line, they're getting their best athletes on the field in the best positions that they can get them. They are a striking team, a blitzing team, a gambling team. Everybody knows that. But they are a team of fine athletes. Second and 12, Dallas at the 37. Three and a half minutes into the game, nothing, nothing. Aikman facing a four-man rush and swings on to Smith, who escapes two Falcons and then gets tackled by a trio, including Solomon and Scott Case and company. Emmett Smith is a guy who, of course, not only carries the ball so much, 
but as you can see in his last four games prior to this one 29 receptions over seven per game and nobody in the league over the last four games has caught more and why not throw it to him look who he makes miss he makes tippins miss he makes tuggle miss i mean right here emmett smith is dead in the water well well there's one miss here comes another one right there and he turns it into positive yardage i'd make the guy a bigger part of my passing game as well like i wouldn't be upset if he handled the ball on every play Third and 11, the crowd, of course, is still booing what they felt was a bad call. Williams. Flags all over the joint. Williams and started. And no play. No yeah. play at all. The play whistle dead. Eric Williams, the right tackle, started out of there again. That's twice now for Eric Williams. This is the... Full start prior to the snap. Number 79 offense. Five yards, still third down. Well, that moved them out of any possible thought of field goal. They would have been looking at something like a 55-yarder to begin with and probably a little long for Lynn Elliott. As we saw before, Eric Williams is the closest uh, player to the camera. There he goes backwards. I mean, that is... Again, this is a new stadium. Dallas has never played in this building before. It is a dome, and it is very noisy. Third and 16 at the 41. Only a three-man run. And it's dumped over the middle. This is Kelvin Martin who takes the ball to the 29-yard line, short of the first down. And so we're looking at about a 48-yard field goal attempt. Bruce Pickens was in on the tackle. Lynn Elliott is a rookie kicker who got off to a terrible start and was probably a, a kick or two away from being cut. And then he reeled off 13 in a row. Two of those were from 53 yards too, Al, so he's well within range. Back-to-back 53-yard as he kicked. Steve Berline will hold. It'll be an official 47-yard attempt. And Lynn Elliott bangs it through. So after the questionable call on the fumble, Dallas takes over. Can't move, but they're close enough for three. And with 9.31 remaining in the opening quarter, the Cowboys take the early lead. Well, Deion Sanders, who is a second in the league, 28.4 is the average uh, of his kickoff returns. The league average annually is around 20 yards per return. He's back, and Lynn Elliott, a guy who has trouble guiding his kickoffs, according to Jimmy Johnson. So if you're wondering if he'll try to boot away from him, well, as Jimmy said last night, he's just going to try to send it deep and send it deep enough into the end zone that he can't run it back. But this one will be run back by Neon Dion from the four. And he brings it back out to the 27-yard line. 23-yard return. And Atlanta will start from that spot. You know, I posed the question before about a player, the defensive player being on the ground and the offensive player on top of him. He is not really part of the ground. And checking with Jerry Seaman, the uh, director of officials for the National Football League, the player can roll off. So that ball was still alive unless his knee had already touched. If his knee had touched on that prior play, which was inconclusive to us. Oh, really? No, well, the knee touched, Al. The knee was down. I mean, so quickly. I mean, I you can see what the official saw. With the benefit of, of, of slow motion, we could see that the knee was down. Here's Broussard. Let's take another look at the yeah. play. If the knee is down, that's the key. Right. I, watch the right knee. The right knee will touch the ground. This is the fumble again. For so you can Pritchard. sit at home. Right there, the knee is down. See, the play is over right there. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying if instant replay would have been in effect, would it have overturned the play? Yes, I think that was conclusive evidence that the knee was down. Now, we couldn't see the football. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that, that's what's the wild card in that scenario. Exactly. Yeah. If the official had ruled otherwise, it would have been yeah. because the football was out of view and thereby did he have possession would have been a question. Second and seven at the 30-yard line from the shotgun. This is Drew Hill making the catch. And Drew Hill in his 13th year has enough for the first. Let's take a look at the Cowboys. It'll be a basic 4-1-6 tonight. Tolbert, Casillas, Maryland, and Haley up front. Norton will be the sole linebacker. And because... The Falcons invariably line up with the four wideouts. Six DBs. Smith, the rookie, with Brown, Gant, Woodson, another rookie, and Everett and Washington. 
It's, it's so unusual that the Cowboys have a middle linebacker, a rookie by the name of Robert Jones, having a good year, and they don't need him tonight. So he's inactive. He's in street clothes. Well, you know, they play Norton in there because he's good against the pass. Norton is not good. Well, it's certainly not as good as Robert Jones is against the run. Norton is a good football player, but he is not a real run defensive player. He is in there also to help out against the pass, and there he is, number one draft pick out of East Carolina, having a superb rookie season, but you don't need him against the Atlanta Falcons. Well, he's the same place that every other middle linebacker and every other team in the league is when they play Atlanta. There's Chris Miller, Atlanta's injured quarterback, the Pro Bowl player, and he will be back next year. He's progressing nicely, but... Without Chris Miller, this offense uh, suffers. I, I know Wade Wilson provided a big spark last year, but Chris Miller is the engine that drives this offensive machine here in Atlanta. He had the five TDs last week, but Wade Wilson also was a former Pro Bowl quarterback up at Minnesota in 1988. First and ten at the 37-yard line. Wilson throws complete. That's Michael Haynes making his first catch of the night. Up at the 42-yard line, it'll be second down and six, and we can tell you that ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Miller Lite. It's everything you want a beer to be. By the new Bic Twin Select for normal and sensitive skin. There's a Bic for every beard. And by the makers of Advil in tablets or caplets. Second down and six. Wade Wilson has started the game three for three. Unusual formation there with Hill lining up as a tailback, but that doesn't fool anybody. In particular, Tony Casillas is right there to take care of Steve Broussard and Casillas coming back to Atlanta where uh, he had a falling out, you might say, with Jerry Glanville and the folks. It was definitely a clash of personalities and, and when Casillas ended up in Dallas he had a, a great many negative things to say about, about Glanville and, and, and I think you could see the emotion that Tony Casillas brought to this game tonight and hey there have been lots of personality uh, clashes before uh, Jerry Glanville's not the only coach that's had a problem with a player and vice versa but he, they had one they had a good one he's out Leon Lett comes in it's third and six at the 41 yard line and Wilson throws up beauty caught by Haynes who takes it all the way to the 10 he found the open spot between Horton and Holt and as was the case twice last week against Tampa, he finds him right down the hash mark. Uh, how, how many Devin things in football Smith expected help from the inside quicker than he got it? And he didn't get it. And great speed on the part of Haynes. Remember the big numbers he put up a year ago, what, 11 receptions over 40 yards. He has great speed. No deception to it whatsoever. Kevin Smith thought he was going to get help from the inside a lot quicker than he did. And he just about broke it for six. 47-yard gain, first and 10 of the 12. Dallas ahead 3-0. And Wilson hitting Pritchard, who takes it to the 6-yard line. He is stopped there by James Washington, and it'll be second down and 4 with under 6 minutes to go in the opening quarter, and the Cowboys up 3-0. Chris Miller. Miller's injury, and one of those AstroTurf freak, nobody even close to him, tried to cut on the turf, and that was that. Against simple, the Rams. Simple scramble against the Rams, planted his foot, blew it out. Second and four at the six-yard line. Three of the four wide outs sent to the left. And Wilson bangs it into the back of the end zone to Drew Hill. Touchdown. Good read, another good read by Wade Wilson. The Cowboys rolling to their left. Drew Hill took it right to the back of the end zone, got lost back there, and was wide open. Box number 85, Drew Hill. Takes it straight back, but he saw him wide open. That's some sort of a blow by the Cowboys secondary. Had to be. Yeah. Drew Hill totally unaccounted for by, by the Cowboys. You can see Washington number 37 Got in there in a chase position, but far too late. Johnson's extra point is good. You've heard the phrase, in a perfect world? Well, Wade's world is a perfect world. He's six for six for the TD. 21 remaining in the first quarter at the Georgia Dome. 
in downtown Atlanta. Capacity crowd looking on. Their Falcons lead 7-3. And Norm Johnson, the longtime Seattle Seahawk, who's been having an excellent year, sends this one down to the two-yard line. And this is Kelvin Martin. Stopped at the 19, a 17-yard run back. Ken Tippins is there for the tackle, and that's where Aikman and his unit go to work. 5-11 left first quarter, 7-3 Falcons. We wrap up the regular season next Monday. Candlestick Park is the site. You're looking at Steve Young. He could be the league's MVP. Young and the 49ers hosting the Detroit Lions and Barry Sanders. Also, Joe Montana. Will he play next Monday? Will he be activated at halftime tonight? We will talk live with 49er coach George Seifert. Also a feature on Jimmy Johnson at the half from the 20-yard line. Aikman throws underneath. This is Novacek who leads the league in catches for tight ends. Jesse Solomon makes the hit, and that's Novacek's 61st catch of the season. Falcons, meanwhile, go 73 yards in seven plays, and Wilson on that drive, a perfect five for five. Novacek, such a key part of this Dallas offense. Last year, 59 receptions. The year before that, 59. Not all that big. He doesn't give you a whole lot of blocking support, but you can use him just like a wide receiver. You can't cover him with a linebacker and live with it. On second and three. Emmett Smith picks up the first down, and the ball comes loose, but after the play is whistled dead at the 33-yard line. Tiffins and Donaldson converge on the tackle. Now, we talk about a league MVP. Steve Young could be the league MVP. Thurman Thomas every year could be. What about a guy like Emmett Smith? When you talk about value, value to a team, is there any man more valuable to his team than number 22 in white? Well, when you look at at what percentage of their offensive a running attack. Oh, and you can see that fumble. That ball comes out before Emmett Smith hits the ground. But he covered it up. Donaldson is the guy who helped to strip it. And the catch is made by Irvin in Atlanta territory. And he's wrestled down at the Falcon 45 by Sanders and Case. You go back on, on what you're talking about with Emmett Smith, Al. I mean, I think this year they have improved their running attack to some degree. Kervin Richards has 149 yards and Daryl Johnson has 61. But that guy is everything else. There's a good look at it. Last year, he was 91% of their rushing yardage. This year, it's a little over 80. But it's the durability that it brings to the table. His sure-handedness is now blossoming as a receiver. It's just that he's kind of overshadowed, in a sense, because of Aikman and Irvin. There's so much other offensive talent here. After a 23-yard pickup on the reception, there is Smith getting close to 10. Call it nine and a half and make it second and short at the Atlanta 36-yard line. He can make a secondary, a good tackling member of the secondary. Looks so silly out there. That time, Scott Case had him lined up. Scott Case, a former Pro Bowl safety man, and he just ducked. Scott Case went right over the top of it. You know, it sounds strange to use a word like overshadowed with Emmett Smith, but he's so quiet. He is, he's, he's almost behind the scenes as, a, as far as outspokenness especially on a team with guys like Urban. Here he is again. He cuts it back as he does so brilliantly and so often and picks up the first down, a gain of five to the 31. Stopped by Tuggle with 2.28 remaining in the opening quarter, 7-3 Atlanta. The thing about Smith, the, he gets better as the game progresses like a lot of great running backs. You've heard it's almost cliche now, but you go back to his, Emmett Smith in high school in Florida, he gained over 8,800 yards rushing. Then off to Florida where he gained almost 4,000 yards rushing. This is a guy that's carried the football hundreds and hundreds of times, and he always shows up. A lot of durability. At the 31, here he goes again. To the 28. He's so important that even though Jimmy Johnson would downplay it, clearly Johnson's worst nightmare would be an injury to Emmett Smith going into postseason. Even though Kervin Richards, as Jimmy said, is a pretty good running back, and there's the guy who would fill the load. And I asked Johnson last night, would you have to change the offense a lot? He, for the moment, said, no, I wouldn't. No, but he sweated a lot when he said it, Al. He said, no, it would be a problem. Kervin Richards would step right in there. I think what he feels is that his offensive line has come along so well this year. This is the same offensive line for Stepnowski at center, and that makes him better, Dan, than we saw at the very beginning of the season. They've been together all year. After this play, I got a scenario for you. Two seconds. <laughs> Second and seven at the 28. 
115 to go in the quarter. Good protection for Aikman, who unloads, and it's caught at the 14 by Alvin Harper. A first down. He's tackled by Tim McIver, a 14-yard gain. You talk about Emmett Smith and his importance to this team. Let me pose a hypothetical question to you. Is it a better team with Troy Aikman at quarterback and Kirvin Richards running the ball? Or is it a better team with Steve Berline at quarterback and Emmett Smith running the football? You know, and when you talk about who's more valuable to the team, Aikman or Emmett Smith, it's an interesting question. You know, it's always the automatic answer is the quarterback is your most valuable guy. I, I'm not 100% sure that's the case here in Dallas. Berline went five games last oh. year, including a playoff. Guy's awful good. There's a lot of, for being so young, there's remarkable depth to Dallas. Here is Smith. Nowhere to roam, and he's tackled by a gaggle of black shirts, Oliver Barnett and Jesse Solomon leading the charge, and that figures to be the final play of the first quarter. And thus the second period will commence at the 15-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. End of the first quarter, the score is Atlanta 7, Dallas Three and we'll return with Monday Night Football after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Monday Night Football. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Atlanta leading 7-3 to three at a second. And 11 for the Cowboys at the Atlanta 15-yard line. And Aikman retreats. Good protection. Underneath, he throws to the 12-yard line. It's a very short gain. It's into the arms of Irvin. And Tippins makes the tackle. That's one of the few catches Irvin has made this season that's not resulted in the first down as we look at the numbers through the first 15 minutes of play. And they're dead even in yardage at 87. Dallas has had the ball most of this quarter, if you look all the way down to the bottom. But... The one turnover belongs to the Atlanta Falcons on their very first offensive play of the game, and that resulted in a Dallas field goal. So, and the only Dallas points so far in this ball game, but they appear to be about to change that. Third down and seven at the 11-yard line. Aikman throws. Nice catch is made by Martin, and it's a touchdown. Dragging Pickens into the end zone. Oh, and he gets a block by Michael Irvin right on the goal line that allows him to get in as well. This is a Dallas Cowboy team that really does play a team concept. Their receivers block for each other downfield. They block for their tight end, and a well-executed pass play results in a Dallas touchdown. Martin comes all the way from the left side, and no way that Pickens is going to stay with him. There's the block that Dan alluded to. Michael Irvin is more than just a receiving wide receiver. He screened off Deion Sanders to allow the touchdown by Kelvin Martin. This is Lynn Elliott out of Burline Cole to put Dallas up by three. Aikman on the drive was a perfect five for five. Martin scores his third touchdown of the season. Dallas reassumes the lead, and now it's time for our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. Deion Sanders has played in only 57 games in his NFL career. He has eight touchdowns on various returns, kickoffs, punts, interceptions. And he stands here at the three-yard line ready to accept Elliott's kick with 14.07 to go in the half. And the Cowboys on top, 10-7. Dallas trying to clinch it in the NFC East. an angled kick. Sanders will take it about two yards in. And they press him to the near side of the field. He couldn't get to the other no. side of the field as the Cowboys did a pretty good job of walling off the route to the right and they sent him right to the sideline and he's run out of bounds by Clayton Holmes. A perfect kickoff. Boxing a dangerous return man into the corner. He has nowhere to go. Noon Eastern time on Christmas Day. Coming your way right here on ABC Sports, and we'll also have the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl to follow BYU against Kansas. I hope you're all home on Christmas Day. Yeah. 
There's Deion Sanders in the game on offense for the first time, and that doesn't fool Russell Maryland. So they run Sanders. They've been using him as a wideout or in the slot. Take your pick from time to time this season, including a touchdown reception last week. But this time, they run him, and it doesn't <laughs> fool anybody. And Russell can tell everybody, I made an open field tackle on Deion Sanders and didn't have any help. Maryland is just penetrating upfield, and on the first rush of his NFL career, Neon Dion goes nowhere. Number one meets number one. So Dion's a career rushing average. That's his first rush ever is minus a four. Miami against Florida State. <laughs> Second and 14, Wade Wilson, who's a perfect six for six, is uh, now six for seven because Pritchard can't hold on. Well, you hate to waste standing that long in the pocket and come up with an incompletion. Tremendous offensive line play by the Falcons. Four men came from the Cowboys' front line and didn't even get close to Wade Wilson. Even he just stands and stands and stands. Hmm. When it looked, oh, there it is right there. It was hit right at the end. Looked to me like Darren Woodson got a hand on the ball. Mm -hmm. Good play, Woodson. Woodson getting a lot more time in that secondary. Former linebacker from Arizona State. Third and 14. Three-man rush. Line does its job. The pass is underneath. It's complete, but uh, for minimal yardage, Drew Hill makes the tackle, and that'll create a punt. And Darren Woodson makes the tackle once again. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. And a good look there at the great Mike Ken walking off the field. 15 years. Mm -hmm. He's played left tackle for the Atlanta Falcons and plans and on coming back for number 16. One of the fine offensive tackles of the last couple of decades. Full Hague to kick. Scott Full Hague. Kelvin Martin to receive it. Line drive kick, good distance. And the run back by Martin flagged down to the 42-yard line, a 48-yard punt. He ran it back nine and a marker down. Martin, the man who scored the touchdown. And it's the old uh, block in the back. This is a recording. Illegal block in the back on the return team, number 47. Ten yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Clayton Holmes. You know, they ought to think about redefining that rule. You see that happen so often. What are you going to do? Let them block people in the back? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Open yeah. it up. It's Easy for you to say. Open it up. Time out. City night football. Dallas Cowboys, defensive unit, secondary. Going over their performance on the far side as the offense takes over at the 29-yard line. 12-10 to go in the half. Aikman on an out to Irvin. And he is pushed out of bounds by Deion Sanders in frustration. It's a 14-yard gain. We mentioned before, almost every time Michael Irvin catches a pass, it's good for a first down. Coming into the game, he caught 67 this season and 64 of them had been for first downs. But again, Sanders, when you're that good, you're going to get a lot of man-for-man -man assignments. You're going to draw the tough receivers, and he was out there on an island all alone. And that time, Irving was the winner of that one. Irving just driving him downfield, breaking it back. Here's Smith. And he turns nothing into something up to the 46. You know, Emmett Smith was the league's leading rusher last year he's in the battle again this year with uh, with Barry Foster however there is a caveat here because if you are the NFL rushing leader if you push that stone to the top <laughs> no rushing leader has ever advanced to the Super Bowl mm. and neither is his team <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah it's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. everybody says you have to run the ball to win in this league, and yet the guy who runs it the best never makes it to the, never wins the big show. Second down and seven. Aikman to the 50-yard line. That's Irvin making the catch. And uh, they stop him short of the first down. So uh, <laughs> it's funny. Every time you bring something up about 
a guy doing something so often, catching balls and almost always getting a first down, he catches a couple in one game that don't result in it. Tuggle makes the hit. Well, a lot of Michael Irvin's uh, receptions are shorter passes like that because they're so much in love with the way he runs with it after he makes the catch. I mean, here's a guy. Yeah, he's yeah. a good runner, too, and he's also big. Yeah, he comes into the game with a, an 18.8 yard per reception average, and, and there currently is 18.4, but a lot of those are seven, eight, nine yard passes that, that he tacks on a 10 yard run afterwards. Third and a long three at the 49 yard line. And there's your long three, and then some to Novacek. He takes it to the 41-yard line. That's a gain of nine. Gardner makes the tackle, and with 10 minutes to go in the half, first down Dallas, and they lead 10-7. Hey, you're never going to cover Novacek with a defensive end dropping off the line of scrimmage. Novacek just picked up the four or five yards. He knew it was good enough for a first down. Aikman dropped back, didn't even look for another receiver, and popped him. But again, Atlanta being forced to play their remaining athletes because they have so many that are damaged, particularly defensively, in out-of-position areas. Gardner and uh, Eric, Williams. Eric Williams. That's a trifecta. That's his third uh, penalty of the game. Full start, 79 offense. Prior to the snap, five yards. Still first down. Well, earlier this season, they gave him an honor they almost never give to a, an offensive lineman. They named him the Offensive Player of the Week in the NFC one week. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think we're going to see a repeat. Hey, the best look there was, was Jay Novacek jumping out of the way. Williams goes off sides. Uh, two big guys uh, lock up, and Novacek, uh, he doesn't want to get his feet stepped on. He just tap dances out of the way. Well, they're pretty big on bookends. And Whoa. Williams is 320, and what a... Over the other side, two and a goes about 300. What a fine young talent Eric Williams is. First and 15. Aikman, who has completed 10 straight, makes it 11. The catch is made by Novacek, who's inside the 20 and wrestled out of bounds at about the 12 by Scott Case. And you can see the side judge. He almost twitched. It looked like he was thinking about throwing a flag. Case in frustration. Tosses Novacek. He just couldn't get him down. See how quick Novacek is getting downfield, though. Just like a wide receiver. They use him in motion. Bring him down. He drives. Case, the free safety. Good man for man defender. And he just races away from Case. Looking like a wide receiver. Well-designed play. And that's a moves it inside the 15. Now that, by the, the way, Bucks. you're not allowed to do. Jay Novacek, you are allowed to put out the stiff arm, but you can't put it on the opponent's face mask. I can see why Case got upset. 34-yard gain, and here is no gain for Emmett Smith. It'll be second and 10 at the 13-yard line, and we'll have another look with 8.20 to go in the half. You can stiff arm the guy that's trying to tackle you, but you can't do it to the face, and that is why Scott Case got a little upset. That's, uh, uh, that's one that Novacek got away with, and then Case got away with one at the end, so I guess it's it all evened out. might be something you're not going to do but if you just do it casually and whip it across there and it happens to happen you'll sell him get a flag for it that was Novacek's longest reception of the season second and 10 to 13 Irvin in motion to the same side as Parker now Aiken looking that way Aiken goes underneath to Novacek and Novacek takes it to the 10 yard line and that will set up a third down and seven risky tackle there by Neon Dion that's a, it's really throwing a block more than it is wrapping up and making the tackle. The risk is if he misses Novacek, Jay goes on into the end zone. He throws himself across and actually with an ankle trips Novacek. A, uh, an unorthodox tackling technique to mm -hmm. say the least. Had that been Irvin, he would have been in the end zone. A little hurdle and he would have been I, gone. I agree. Aikman's going to take a timeout. Oh, and Michael Irvin yelling at Troy Aikman. Ooh. I, I, I'm sure it wasn't that something that Aikman had done. I think Michael Irvin saw some weakness in the Atlanta defense and was hoping they could get the playoff. Dallas on the third down. They love to look at Novacek in these situations. 23 receptions on third down. Only Sterling Sharp of Green Bay with more coming into the weekend. He's already caught four balls tonight. 
It's third down and seven at the 10 yard line. Aikman, who's completed 12 straight, makes it 13, hits Irvin, but Irvin pushed back at his forward progress. I don't believe has a first down. They're going to put it at the four, and that's going to set up a fourth and a one, and Lynn Elliott and the gang are coming in. Well, well, a good fourth and very short, but Jimmy Johnson doesn't even hesitate. You're up seven to three with the field goal unit out there. That's good, good up there. That's good aggressiveness, Frank, by the Falcons. They had three guys make the hit on Irvin all at once, and that, that's what kept him from getting the first down yardage and forces a field goal. Good hustle. Spurline will spot it at the 12. It's a 22-yard attempt for Lynn Elliott to try to put Dallas up by six. No problem. Elliott boots it through. Aikman's completed 13 consecutive passes. 6-14 to the half. 13-7. Georgia Dome, 6-14 to go in the half. Cowboys lead it 13 to 7. Lynn Elliott to put it in the air. Deion Sanders waiting for it. And again, it's a beautiful oh, kick. Perfect. Taking it to four. He pins him in the corner. And Sanders comes out to the 27. That's still a pretty good run back, but when you got Deion on the other end, you'll take a 23-yard return. AG makes the tackle. Yeah, that's all he could do with it. That's like uh, having a gate just swinging, the hinge being on the sideline. Here as to where Dion was, and it just closes on it. Good coverage by Dallas, and Dion did all he could do with it. Hmm. Dallas has had the ball almost uh, three times as much as the Falcons to this point in the game. Hard to kick that over there if you're a right-footed kicker, too. Ordinarily, you could kick it further and more accurately and hooking it to the left. Look into uh, the face mask of one Charles Haley. The ex-49er came over at the beginning of the season. To help the pass rush is Broussard finds room, and Broussard is close to a first down, but a flag comes down. Could have been a mask, face mask on James Washington. Two flags actually came in, one from mm -hmm. an official on the side, and then one deep out of the secondary. Well, we've got a Ooh. clip. Glanville said, how can we have that? Larry Nimmers is the referee. Track back, number 35, offensive team. We'll go half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Pritchard. Oh, yeah. Pritchard set out to the right, just cracked back. Right in full view of the official. And he didn't even complain about it. Right in, in full view of two officials. <laughs> it was, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah at the 13-yard uh, line now, so that negates what would have been uh, the best run of the night. Wade Wilson, the longtime Viking. Wilson uh, went to Minnesota during the offseason. He said, I would have gone home to Dallas. I thought I had a job there. They released me just before training camp. Went home for two days. Atlanta called, and that's how he wound up here. Half the distance meant it was a 14-yard penalty. It's first and 24. Wilson throws it back here to Drew Hill and Hill is taken down by Larry Brown up at the 23 yard line what a wonderful receiver Drew Hill's been over the years starting with the Rams and down to Houston over four 580 receptions and still going strong at 13 years in the league well he's had his best years uh, since turning 30 uh, he's made far more catches in uh, in the decade since he's turned 30 than when he was in his 20s. He used to play with the Rams. In fact, he was with the Rams so long ago, he played in the Super Bowl when the Rams played Pittsburgh in 79. One of the best years, of course, coming with run and shoot teams. Second and 15. Wilson dives ahead to the 33-yard line. Wade Wilson, a Texan, went to East Texas State, makes his home now near Dallas. Georgia Dome, of course, as you look around in its first year, and this facility will host the Super Bowl next January. This, su this coming Super Bowl at Pasadena, and then the uh, one following the 93 season right here. And that, of course, will be put into use for a variety of events during the Olympics, which will be here in Atlanta from, in 1996. So, 
This venue will be getting a lot of high-profile exposure over the next couple of years. Third down, and let's call it five as Wilson throws. The catch is no. Made out of bounds. Pritchard was there, and the official came over and said no. Sure was a nice catch. It was Artistically, it was yeah, fun. It sure was. He gets 9.9 .9 on style points, <laughs> but a 0.0 in uh, that it doesn't count. Need another picky down. He comes down with one foot. There's your left. No right. The right uh, actually wasn't even close, but still a sensational effort by Mike Pritchard in the catch. We talk so much about Deion Sanders being such a great return man. Kelvin Martin is just about as dangerous as you're going to find in this league today. He is so quick back there. Well, the difference between the two is that Martin does both kickoff returns and punts. Martin's run two punts back for touchdowns. Oh, that's a great catch. That's 51 yards to the 16 and a four-yard run back by Martin to the 20. And Martin boxed in just like Sanders had been on the kickoff. You put him down there and you just swing the gate of the coverage closed on him. Well, Fulhake says, I'm not the only kicker in this stadium that can pin it right up against the sideline. Elliot's been doing Great a good kick. job with the Dallas kickoffs and vice versa. At the 21-yard line, Cowboys have it. 3.45 remaining in the opening half. Atlanta's defense has not done much to stop the Cowboy offense from uh, knocking off some big chunks of yardage ever since their opening drive. So uh, a good opportunity for them to step it. If Aikman completes his next pass, he'll tie the team record with a 14th consecutive completion, and he does not as he throws it a little bit out of the reach of Michael Irvin. That's only his second incomplete pass of the game. His oh. first pass was incomplete, and this one. If he leads that inside, well, it wouldn't be six points because Deion Sanders would have probably run Irvin down as he would just about anyone, but that with no inside help for Sanders, and that ball just overthrown. <laughs> Take a look at Irvin. He just goes right by Sanders. I hope Dion wasn't telling him, hey, I had you all the way. Oh, if he leads it inside <laughs> instead of overthrowing it, his six points are, are very close. There's Mike. Sanders would have caught it. That's Mike Gann. We'll get back to him in a minute, standing on the Falcon sidelines. He's a big story down here. Second and ten. Emmett Smith picks up five. Third Mike, down. Mike Gann is their eighth-year uh, defensive end from Notre Dame who, within the last month, was diagnosed with testicular cancer had surgery is in the process right now of receiving radiation but talking to him down on the field before the game really asked that I tell everybody his friends that he's doing well that his prognosis is, is excellent and he fully plans on being back next year playing defensive line for the Atlanta Falcons he's feeling better the radiation has made him nauseous but uh, but he's doing well and he wants everybody to know it and of course we all wish him well mm -hmm. Third and five, and here's Aikman throwing up to the 30-yard line, and somehow skittering away is Irvin, who initially was stopped, and that's what he does so well. He makes the catch and then picks up a lot more. Yeah, All the way to the 38-yard line of the Falcons. We talked about the seven and eight yard, uh, in many ways, like an Andre Reed in, in Buffalo, the guy who, who isn't afraid to work the middle and make people either miss him or, in this case, bounce off of him. This is... Michael Irvin using his size, wrapped up, held by Dion, tackled by Dion, and Dion gets up looking like, why isn't this guy on the ground? That's that is the athletic ability and the all-around skill of Michael Irvin. And strength oh. for an outside receiver. Yes, sir. He is 6'2, about 200 pounds, and nothing Sanders could do. 220 to go in the half. Cowboys have two timeouts remaining. They try and end around here with Harper, who takes it inside the 30, and he's out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Chuck Smith is saying that Mark Stepnoski, the center, got out there and hit him in the back. Either Stepnoski or Giesick, I'm not sure which one it was. There's 53 and 63. That's a good call against the Atlanta Falcons. Always is. A lot of teams use reverses against them. They're such a pursuing attack defense. It's Giesick, 63 comes out, and there you see he hits... He hits Chuck Smith in the back, but that was kind of a deceiving angle. Smith was actually down on the ground and underneath. Very deceiving. 
collaborative at the back. <laughs> Two minute warning. Two minutes to go in the half. Cowboys have the ball, lead by six, and uh, they picked up 53 yards to Atlanta's eight on the ground and have outgained them almost two to one in the air. I think it's very key for Dallas to be able to control the rushing of Atlanta coming into tonight because they're playing a straight four down line with Kenny Norton in the middle, and they are stopping the running game of Atlanta. And here is Emmett Smith. And he fights his way to the 18-yard line for a gain of about five. Second and six. Troy Aikman, who's been almost perfect tonight. We mentioned he came within one of establishing or tying the Dallas team record for most consecutive completions. Not held by Meredith. Not held by Staubach. Not held by White. Not even held by Clint Longley. The record is held by Steve Ballour. I was going to drop a Greg Morton in there. Yeah, sure. You mean there's something that Don Meredith doesn't hold? <laughs> I, know what he holds I, I won't answer that. <laughs> Maybe held it once. <laughs> <laughs> He's sipping on it right now. Second and five. And there's a flag. Novacek takes it inside the five and gets to the pylon for the touchdown momentarily. Let's see about the flag back at the line of scrimmage. Headlinesman made the call. And I'm not even sure Novacek had control if it is against Defense, Atlanta. number 21, lined up offside. Penalty is refused. Touchdown. <laughs> Dion mm. on the outside coverage, lined up offside, trying to get in the face of Irvin, and lined up offside. You don't see that very often. Glanville looking up at the replay. All right, here's Novacek in his dive for the end zone. It point, from that angle, it looks like he didn't have control of the football when it came across the goal line. So close. Kind of, yeah, it's, that angle did make it appear, though, as if the ball was separated from his body. Elliott's extra point is good. Novacek has made five catches in the first half. And remember, he had both Cowboy touchdowns last week in the loss to Washington. Ball just has to... Hard to tell from that angle, too. I'm sure we got a couple more. Novacek again with such quickness. I mean, he, he definitely loses control of the football. Question being, mm. was it before or after he crosses the goal line? The only thing we can say is that the side judge is right there. That's Scott Case with, pulling on the arm. Well, sooner or later, they figure to get in. Even if they said he was down at the two-inch line, Dallas is terrific <laughs> on first and goal, and Atlanta <laughs> stinks on first and goal on defense. What are they, 81% getting yeah. into the end zone well, the uh, from inside the 10-yard line? Well, the difference being there, if they ruled it a fumble out in the field of play mm -hmm. and it goes on through the end zone and out of the end yep. zone, it's a touchback. Yep. That's that's what Atlanta certainly could have used. I, I <laughs> sucked you into to buying my replay yeah. theory now, didn't I? I haven't said anything uh, about buying into your replay oh, okay. theory. We were just analyzing the play on the field. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the holiday story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think Atlanta's feeling very generous right now. Here's Come Sanders, on. and oh, Deion's thinking about it. Seven yards deep, but uh, he took a look at a few white shirts out there and figured, yeah. well, better, better to bring it out to the 20. Yeah, Lynn Elliott hung that one up there deep into the end zone, and Sanders made the right move. It's okay to take a line drive that deep in the end zone, try and bring it out, but little or no chance for Sanders, even as good as he is running him back. Because, again, he was pinned over against the left sideline. June Jones, offensive coordinator for Atlanta, and, of course, a major proponent of the run and shoot, red guns, whatever you want to call it, spread offense. That when it's working, is beautiful to behold. When it isn't, it's embarrassing. First and ten, Falcons at the 20. They have all of their timeouts. Wilson leads them to the line out of the shotgun. First and ten from the 20. Is made. That's a gain of six. Broussard takes it out of bounds up to 26, and it stops the clock at 110. A reminder at halftime, Jimmy Johnson, uh, another tremendous year, coach of the year last year. He could be again this year, and they'll have a lot of competition from some rookie head men. And then we'll talk to George Seifert. We have Detroit against San Francisco next week. We'll find out from the 49er coach if Montana will play, how much Montana will play if he does next week at Candlestick Park. Second down and 
four at the 26 yard line. That's a first down as Broussard steps out of bounds at the 32 with 104 left. You might wonder why Broussard is so open. The Atlanta Falcons seldom, very rarely throw to their running backs coming out of the backfield. Obviously they had the four wide receivers ordinarily in the game, but they seldom use their backs out of the backfield. And the last two plays, Broussard is wide open. All in frequency. They break the frequency down, they throw it into the computer, spit it out on Wednesday, give it to the defense, and what that has told Dallas, very seldom will they hit the offensive back to the back there. At the 32-yard line. Incomplete. That's Andre Risen, who's been uh, pretty much blanketed tonight and has been quiet on the receiving end. I don't think he has a reception, does he? Andre uh, has been blanked, and that is uh, very unusual. When you consider that coming into the game, his receptions match the number on his jersey. You know, somebody That's was speculating, a... Dan, that you find it interesting that Dallas has the number one defense in the NFL through the 14 games, and they might not have anyone going to the Pro Bowl from that defense again. Well, I, part of that is because of their age. Uh, part of that is because Haley, who has been a Pro Bowl player before, but has played outside linebacker, is now judged as a defensive end. Here's Drew Hill making the catch, and that has it into Dallas territory at the 47-yard line. Dave Wanstead is the defensive coordinator. 50 seconds remaining, and a timeout is taken here, number one, by Atlanta. You know, really the only guy with any Pro Bowl experience to speak of is, is, is Haley, but he's always been going as a linebacker. Uh, and here he is, a defensive end, and, and, and the competition at defensive end, uh, formidable in the NFC. Good look at him working against Ken, working against Broussard, who gets in his way. And uh, Charles Haley has uh, had, I guess by statistical standards of his past, had a disappointing year, only four sacks coming into tonight's game. Be interesting to see what his long-term future will be with the Cowboys. He came to Dallas with only a one-year contract. He's in that class of potential free agents. I still think you play in the NFC East. Uh, a lot of good football teams. You meet week in and week out. And you're the number one defensive team. And you really don't have any great star. I think it's a real tribute to a team defense. And that Dave wants it. First and 10, 47-yard line. Wilson throws. And a nice catch is made at the 28-yard line by Michael Haynes. Oh, well thrown by Wilson. Kevin Smith with the coverage and another timeout for Atlanta. They're second with 43 ticks left. 21-yard pickup. Dallas in there are six defensive backs. Hard to find an area that open, that deep downfield. And well thrown. Michael Haynes, good concentration, gets the... Reception and the first down. At the 27, so Atlanta now with one timeout left, and they are uh, very close. Well, they're in field goal range for Norm Johnson, who's having a terrific season. But uh, Jerry Glanville thinking about seven right now. That would be a lot better than three. 20 to seven is the score. One different kind of cat right there. <laughs> Johnson, the field goal kicker on the sideline. Wilson guides into the 27, first and 10. Caught at the 21 by Pritchard. Rolled to the turf at the 18. Second and one coming up. And Atlanta does not take a timeout here. Wilson instead saves that last timeout. Now you've got a third and one coming up, so you got obviously time to run another play, and then if you can convert, another play after that. Depending. Depending. Depending how long, what type of a play, how long it takes them to uncover. Of course, keep in mind they'll get no cooperation from the Dallas Cowboys in, in, in getting their players back up and back to the huddle or back to the line of scrimmage. They'll intentionally cover them up, uh, delay as long as they can. They're, uh, they're getting upright. I think you've got to look the rising down here. He's been shut out this far, but he is so tough coming across the middle. And you're down in close. And among other things, they need to convert. It's third and one. Off the fake. 
He throws. The catch is made by Pritchard. He's trying to get out of bounds to save the timeout and does at the nine-yard line. Uh, with 16 seconds remaining, too. Time yeah. for a couple. Big play to get to that stripe and save that final timeout. And Kenny Gant was the defensive back on Pritchard, and, and he wrapped him up and made sure he didn't get away from him. And he doesn't know how close he is to the sidelines and, and really doesn't make an effort to keep Pritchard from going out of bounds, nor should he. He's, he's intent upon making the tackle. That was a smart play by Mike Pritchard. First and goal, 16 seconds left. Watch the Dallas blitz here. Here it comes. Here comes everybody, and that causes Wilson to throw up a duck as Darren Woodson came charging in and might have gotten a piece of it, certainly got a piece of Wilson. That used four seconds, 12 picks left. That was not a very well-disguised blitz. You would have thought that Atlanta, Frank, might have been in a better position to handle it. Woodson breaks a bit early. Broussard did get in there to get to his feet, but Wade, I'll, uh, I'll let you describe that ball. What was that? When you shoot down, you'd like to have back. But a shell only used four seconds. And if Atlanta could put it in the end zone, this would be a different second well, they, they also have time to not necessarily go to the end zone. They still have a timeout. Second and goal. Wilson fires to the back of the end zone and incomplete. Haynes got his hands on it, but couldn't hold on. And now you're down to six seconds. See, I don't think you had to go to the end zone. You could have, just look how much time it, you could have thrown one short. 12 seconds is enough time to run a play and stop it with a timeout. Well, that but, should have been caught. But if you, if you do that, Dan, and you don't get into the end zone, then you're saying to yourself, oh, wait a second, I'm going to have to kick the field goal here. You know, if you leave yourself with, let's say, four seconds, if you don't try to go to oh, the end zone. Oh, well, sure. But, but I, think, I mean, you can run it into the end zone after you catch it, is my point. Well, in any event, they, they go for it in one play, don't make it, have to settle for what they hope is three. 27-yard attempt for Johnson, and that's good. Two seconds remaining in the hand. Button. And there go those two seconds. And, and then Glanville is saying, where'd those two seconds go? But he, actually, he doesn't need those two seconds. Considering he had to kick off with them. Yep. In any event, they get three. That ends the half. The Cowboys lead the Falcons 20-10. And back we come with halftime activities. After this message from the NFL and a word for ABC Station. And that is an accurate summation <laughs> of their first half. So they lead 20 to 10. But that could change with this guy in one kickoff return. You know, I figured out why he's so good. He gets a lot of practice. <laughs> Playing for he does. <laughs> well, that, that happens when uh, you have the last ranked defensive team in the National Football League. Here's a bouncing kick, and that's taken at the nine-yard line, and they can't even get it into the hands of Sanders. It's taken by Eric Pegram, who last year at the end of the season was their number one running back, and now he's a special teamer. He takes it to the 26, and Clayton Holmes makes the tackle. Well, we haven't seen very many incomplete passes tonight. In fact, we talked about the, the consecutive passes. Each had a real long streak in the first half. Aikman wound up completing 15 of 17. Wilson, 14 of 20. So for the game, the two of them combined 78.4%. And that's uh, not far away from the all-time record of 82.1% in one game. Steve Barkowski on the Atlanta end and Joe Montana on the San Francisco end. And Billy White, who's Johnson, was the B. Johnson, who was 0 for 1. They begin with Broussard on the ground, and he takes it out to the 30-yard line. That's a gain of four. He's tackled by Tony Casillas. As you look at Aikman. You know, Casillas made that last tackle. We were visiting with Tony. Casillas came over from Atlanta. We talked about his problems with Glanville. He's a horse owner. He has a horse. He has a, a thoroughbred by the name of Harry and Jerry. When he liked Glanville, he named part of the horse after Glanville. And then, of course, as he says it now, as he tells the story... <laughs> Uh, he says, guess which part of the horse is named after Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Where, which part? <laughs> well, that's, I asked him. <laughs> jo Jerry is a lover, hate guy. <laughs> Second and six. <laughs> Catch is made by Pritchard. Knowing Jerry Glanville, I, I doubt that causes him a great deal of concern. No. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about Casillas, though, I mean, remember uh, we were talking to Jimmy Johnson about... Casillas, he said he remembered recruiting him when he was at Oklahoma State. 
Notice the uh, time of go there, but I mean, uh, he did recruit him. He said he knew he was a good kid, so they went ahead and made the deal. Notice the time of possession here. That's exactly what the score is. 20 to 10. Mm. Point per uh, minute. I can't recall ever having seen it uh, work out that precisely. Yep. Well, maybe it just looks good that way. That's <laughs> a point a minute offense. The 37-yard line. It's oh. Broussard fumbling the football after a nice run. And the Dallas Cowboys appear to have recovered, and they have. Kenneth Gant is the guy who stripped the football from Steve Broussard. And at the bottom of the pile, to give possession to the Cowboys is Larry Brown. Boy, it just hopped right to Brown. There were three Falcons in the vicinity of the football. There's Kenny Gant. Watch Gant coming in from the left. There's the right hand, knocks out the ball. Broussard can't get back up. And Ryzen is there. Mike Ken is there. Drew Hill is there. And yet the lone Cowboy comes away with the ball. You know, Kenny Gant's the guy that makes things happen for the Cowboys. Three interceptions. You've got three sacks. Good football player. Oh, and one of the fine special teams players well, in the entire league. It all. Cowboys with a 10-point lead. First down at the Falcon 48-yard line. And Emmett Smith takes it down to the 40 for a gain of eight. Jesse Tuggle and Jesse Solomon converge for the tackle. And to keep this in perspective for Dallas, they need a win tonight to wrap up the NFC Eastern Division. Guaranteeing that home field guaranteeing a week off at least home field for the first game and the first nfc championship since 1985 for america's team which is back and that will also put them in a position to host the nfc championship game if by chance the 49ers were upset here is smith breaking one inside the 30 that's a gain of 17 down to the 23 yard line he's tackled by donaldson and Emmett Smith has now gained 67 yards tonight, so he's on a pace to go over 100. That average, any time that it's on the far side of four, creeping towards five, that's where Smith is tonight, 4.8 yards per carry. That's just plain old-fashioned butt-whipping at the line of scrimmage. The Dallas offensive line rooted everybody in a black jersey out of their way. That's exactly what that defense gives up on average, too. Atlanta defense, 4.8. Can I say that, by the way? Well, during the night, it took us with him. At the 23-yard line, here is Harper making the catch. Touchdown. Oh, McQuire McQu is complaining bitterly about a push-off. There is no flag, nor will there be one. But Tim McQuire is still going at it with the official on the sideline, and to anyone who will listen. Let's watch it from ground level coming right at us. Last Alvin Harper with the tremendous size at 6'3". And he does get the left hand out to keep that separation. He, uh, uh -huh, so uh, very good. Just <laughs> enough to keep him away. Uh -huh. Not enough to draw a flag. That's a pretty smart play by Alvin Harper. Extra point by Lynn Elliott is good. If he would have rocked McKayer back by hitting him that hard, that brings a flag. But he did knock him back. He really just kind of absorbs him with the left hand and goes up and makes it. Big time play by Harper. Explain me how he did it. Alvin Harper, who was a seven-foot high jumper in high school. Yeah, a few moments ago, you saw him leap high over the head of Tim McKayer. And using the asset that that both he and Michael Irvin have, and that is the tremendous size at wide receiver. That's where it comes in handy when you're in close quarters with another DB. Having it and using it, they can do both. Lynn Elliott, the rookie out of Texas Tech, bounces one to Sanders at the two-yard line. Dion can fly up the middle, loses the football. Dallas has it again. Thomas Everett is the guy who recovers it. And Tommy Agee is the man who dislodged it. For the first time tonight, Dion got the football in the middle of the field. One that did not hang up there and let the coverage get downfield. He tried to exploit it, and he was really hammered. Dion's Neon is on the verge of running out of gas. 
He's trying. It's a good effort right up the middle. He takes to the air here, and before he even gets up off the ground, the ball comes out. Don't man really yeah. just lost it. And Tommy Ace he was the closest cowboy to him. At the 29 now. Emmett Smith swings to the outside. It's a three oh, still oh. going. Emmett Smith doing a Barry Sanders imitation. Touchdown. And Deion Sanders hits him late and knocks him down, but it's a touchdown. I'll tell you what, he looks like he might be hurt too. He, he's under the stand. Rolled under the stands. We're going to have to scrape him out. Oh, there he is. I tell you, whether he got into the end zone or not, he deserves it. Well, <laughs> what an effort. Whether mm. he got in or not, he's got it. <laughs> he's going to keep it. Keeps the ball. Oh, that was beautiful. What an effort. Reminiscent of a run we saw early in the year by Barry Sanders, where he was hit, stopped. Look at this. Look at the number of hits he takes, but nobody from the Falcons wraps up. I'll tell you, their leading tackler, Jesse Tuggle, had his arms wrapped around him, and he still was able to mm. spin and twist out. Lynn Elliott for the point after, and so a 10-point halftime lead in 3 minutes and 35 seconds has been extended to a 24-point margin. E. Smith. There's Tuggle. Well, at least we see Dion return another kickoff. He'll be exhausted before the night's over. You know, a lot of times uh, you ask, uh, how much can a player bench press? Well, take a look at this. More importantly, he dropped that too. That's Dion coming off the field after the fumble and then uh, watching the touchdown by Emmett Smith. And the score is 34 to 10. And Lynn Elliott sends this one off Sanders' hand and out of the end zone for a touchback. And now oh, you've got uh, a scrap. We've got a fight down here. Is that Vincent Smith? That's Vincent Smith. Yep. yep. And uh, you got uh, Chuck Smith down there as well. This brought out a flag. Will it be our basic offsetting? Larry Nemers is the referee. Well, Jimmy Johnson watching his team respond after last week's agonizing defeat. The call is against the Cowboys. We only saw the the signal one way, so we assume Personal just foul Dallas. after the dead ball on number 57 of the kicking team. It'll be 15 yards from the 20-yard line, first and 10. So Vincent Smith and, and uh, Jimmy Johnson wants to know why you don't have offsetting here. Or at the very least, so does Joe Yeah, an explanation of what happened. And now this is a, you know, this is a point in time where, needless to say, they're they're leading by 24 points. Jimmy doesn't want to see his team lose concentration. Football coaches have a tendency of kicking it into high gear right here because they do not want their team to let up at all. From the 35-yard line, that catch is made by Drew Hill. And he takes it out to the 44-yard uh, line, gain of nine, and it's been that kind of a. Uh, season and um, lots of meetings of that sort on the Falcon sideline. Meanwhile, Sanders, um, well, uh, prime time has uh, not done what he would uh, prefer to do in prime time. Both of his fumbles have come under the Klieg lights. Second and one at the 44 is Wade Wilson. Throws and that catch is made by Haynes. And he takes it to the 41 of Dallas. Michael Haynes has a first down. Yeah, still Andre Risen has yet to see his first reception. He hasn't got one, has he? No, and then there's Andre. I saw him before the game. He's going around humming, bum, 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 bum. You know, the Monday night open mm -hmm. theme. He loves playing on Monday night, but he's been blank tonight. He's ready for some football. <laughs> Eighty 
interceptions coming into tonight. First and 10, 41 yard line, 10 10 to go, third quarter. Cowboys up by 24. Cowboys show blitz here. They come. Wilson releases quickly. Drew Hill with a little spin move, but he's still tackled by Thomas Everett. Another pickup by the Cowboys. Everett didn't sign his contract with Pittsburgh, so they picked up Thomas, and we talked about at the top of the show, it's Jerry Jones and it's Jimmy Johnson, and they make all the calls, and they go out and they get the Haley's, and they do the drafting, and they get the Everett's, and they put all of the pieces in the puzzle together. And if they don't win the Super Bowl, they're sure going to come close. Asher Walker, of course, the big story, but they've made 43 trades. 29 times they've gone to plan B. They have really moved it. Second and eight at the 39-yard line. And Wilson is rising first opportunity tonight, and uh, that one is dropped. It'll be third and eight. And he gets he gets an earful from rookie Kevin Smith, the Cowboys' number one draft choice this year. It's uh, easy to talk when you're up by 24 points. Uh, when you're when you're down by 24, you immediately become a much better listener. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get locked jaw quickly. Don't you? you don't have much to say because the other team has the ultimate comment. Look at the scoreboard. And uh, in the shadows there is Jerry Jones. And he and Jimmy Johnson, as many of you know the story, they were teammates at the University of Arkansas. Jerry made his money in oil. You know, they, they, mused, of it. they mused about owning and coaching a team together one day. Third down and eight. And there's Andre Risen making the catch, but losing the ball. Did he get it back is the question at the 36-yard line. Who's got it? Looked like one of the... Falcons offensive lineman covered it up and Kenneth, he did Kenneth Gant is the guy who dislodged it yep making something happen once again looks like maybe Houston Hoover has it down there yeah he, that's who it is number 69 he swept it up mm -hmm. he certainly did <laughs> I want you cannot draw me into this Al I refuse <laughs> too early <laughs> it is way too early <laughs> There is Ryzen trying to make something happen, as and that's where more often than not you'll see somebody fumble. Is that they're they're just giving a second effort and it has not worked out for the Falcons this season or tonight. And they have to go for it. You're down by 24. It's fourth and five at the 36-yard line. And Wilson hits Pritchard to the 29-yard line, and that is a first down. Larry Brown with the coverage. A good sharp throw by Wade Wilson. He has really thrown the ball well tonight. It's it's unfortunate that the scoreboard re doesn't reflect how well Wade Wilson has played quarterback this evening. A good read yeah. on the part of Wilson too, Dan. He yeah. picks up the single coverage. The the roll was to the left side of the field, and Wilson with a good read gets the completion. Throws it back to the inside, right on the shoulder pad. Good velocity. Next one throw. Wade Wilson. Pritchard oh. can't make the catch in bounds. His best effort, but incomplete. Boy, another 9.9 .9 for style points, huh? He has had two 9.9s tonight. Uh, neither one goes down on the stat sheet as a completion. That was a sticky-fingered one-handed grab. Hmm? Chris Miller, we, we looked at him during the first half in Chevy's and uh, with a knee surgery back next season. Worth looking at again. Yeah, there's a catch Lester Hayes would be proud of. Ooh, yeah. he came close, too. That's, uh, that's a catch reminiscent of the old days where the players were layered and stick them and it just smacked their hand and stayed there. On second and ten, they try a draw. This is Tony Smith. And Tony Smith is the driven out of bounds at the 21-yard line by Kevin Smith and James Washington. You know, when you're down by this many, uh, the running game goes out the window for the most part. But Tony was one of two first-round draft choices. In fact, he's the guy they picked in the deal which sent Brett Favre to Green Bay. They got a first-round pick 
and he was uh, their second first round choice this year with Bob Whitfield being the other 320 yards uh, coming into tonight's game for Tony Smith and you just are standing over on the Falcon sideline where he has been all season long he has seen precious little playing time but two great tackles here in Atlanta Chris Hinton and Mike Kent third down and two and they kind of pick up the first on the ground and they're a little short of that as Tony Smith can only get it to the 20 and that's going to set up a fourth down and a yard or less don't you get the impression though guys that Tony Smith is a is a running back that the Falcons are waiting for him to blossom I mean I, I don't know that you just automatically say he's a number one draft choice he's in the NFL and he's going to be a star I, I don't think anyone is saying that at this point in time about Tony Smith yeah well you get well the, the Ken Herrock went out and he got him and clearly you know as you, you talked about before Dan you, you get a Barry Sanders with a run and shooter or Lorenzo White it makes a tremendous difference there is the story and they can only hope that somebody like that matures remember the last year they tried Eric Keegram and this time they do not convert as the Cowboys are equal to the task and they give it to Keith Jones his first carry of the night and he is stopped by Jimmy Jones that might be one of the real problems two number one draft picks at running back are not tearing things up here the offensive line of these Atlanta Falcons Mike Cannon's been around 15 years it was a great player he's playing on a very sore knee Chris Hinton on the other side playing on a very sore knee I mean the Cowboys just came right through the cracks and they don't get the first Well, quite simply, the Lions uh, coming on at the end of the year. That means Barry Sanders. But the most important aspect, next Monday, Candlestick Park. George Seifert telling us at halftime, Joe Montana plays. First time in two years next Monday night. Emmett Smith to the 23. As everybody knows, the 49ers have everything they need to be clinched. clinched. So they play out the string next Monday. But the Candlestick Park will be rocking next Monday night. Because number 16 is going to get into the game. And as Seifert told us at halftime, he hopes for two quarters against Detroit. And we'll be there. And lost in that story is another quarterback story, Andre Ware. Back-to-back -back wins now for Detroit. Look forward to seeing 16 back out there circulating mm -hmm. around. Emmett Smith, meanwhile, 16 carries tonight, 99 yards. So he's on his way to another triple-figure game. But for the moment, they go to Harper, and that's a first down as Alvin has it up to the 40-yard line. Tim McIver makes the stop with 5.25 to go in the third. <laughs> there is, 34 to 10. There is no absence of uh, animosity between these two teams. You can see it right there that Harper and, and McIver came up talking to one another. These are uh, the Cowboys. We saw Jimmy Johnson in our open talk about he likes his team to have a certain amount of swagger. Well, this team has two things. It has swagger and it has talent. The Falcons, unfortunately, are in a period where they have a little more swagger than they have talent. Swagger a lot better with talent, doesn't it? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. They do go better together. <laughs> Here's Smith, and that's a two-yard gain, and that's enough to put them up and over 100. One without the other is a little bit hollow. Yeah. Now you mentioned the animosity. Our, our man Keith Jackson, let's face it, he coined that phrase about 15 years ago. You got a couple of teams that don't like each other very much. And that's the way to put it. And the Falcons meet the Cowboys. What did he say about the big uglies? <laughs> he, he said they were in the trenches. That's right. That's where you play. I know one of his phrases that won't get used tonight. What's that? A real barn burn. <laughs> <laughs> Burned to the ground. <laughs> Took a cornfield with it. Yeah. it. Sure did. Second and eight at the 42-yard line. Emmett Smith, uh-oh, up to the 45-yard line. Lost Emmett his footing. Lost it, a little stutter step. <laughs> he would have picked up at least 10 or 15 on that. Now look at this, just a little quick stutter. And <laughs> bang, the shoe adheres to the surface, on push the surface, and down he goes. Jesse Tuggle got the tap. Emmett Smith while he was down, so he gets credit for a, a, an unassisted tackle. And they give him about 20 every time he has one. That's the easiest unassisted tackle anyone will ever have on Emmett Smith. Third and four to 46 yard line, 325 left in the third. Emmett 
slippery, and he gets knocked down from behind. Darian Connor, who was already into the backfield, knocks him down, and that will create a rare Dallas punt. They have scored on how many consecutive possessions? Six? Yes, a rare punt indeed. Prior to tonight, uh, Deion Terry Glanville to... telling us that uh, they had only given up, what, one touchdown in 14 quarters? Uh, defensively? Anchor the benches if Dion doesn't do much with this. Yeah. Well, Houston Hoover, the guard sitting on one. I know Dion's not going to get that one <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> Short hop by Saxon. A nice pickup and a good kick under the circumstances. The flag is down. That's a 48-yard punt. Taking it to five. <laughs> and Sanders is out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Charles Washington oh, came oh. flying in, and there were two flags. Mike Saxon paid the price. And this one could very well, well wind up in uh, in Dallas's uh, possession as Bobby April. The even, it, it will even running or well, holding against Dallas. If it's running into the kicker, that's enough for a first down. But could be awesome. Two flags here. Yeah. Joe Avizano, the special teams coach for Dallas. 70, offense, holding. Roughing the kicker, the penalty's offset, replay fourth down. Ooh. Charles Washington was the Falcon defensive back that tagged Saxon. Dale Hellestray That's was the uh, snapper. And he's also the, the one that was flagged for holding. So they'll put it back at the 47-yard line. Dion will have a chance to work his magic again. Bobby April, mm -hmm. one of the more animated and mm -hmm. energetic special teams coaches in the National Football League, has not had a lot to get excited about. Mm -hmm. tonight. Jerry Glanville having a discussion on the sideline, probably wanting to make the point that seeing the snap bounced on its way back to the kicker, that uh, his man should be excused. <laughs> Gary Glanville started out in this game as a special teams coach. Falling on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. Was here with Atlanta as a special teams coach in the early 80s. Came on to be a defensive coordinator before bouncing around and going to Houston and then finally here. He has had success wherever he has gone. You have to give him credit for that. And a lot of it, very quick success. Saxon to punt again. Sanders, that's another 48-yard boot. And a six-yard run back. Dion to the 11-yard line where he's tackled by Jimmy Smith. So they keep pinning Dion. And the Cowboys keep pinning the Falcons by 24. 2.17 left in the third quarter at the Georgia Dome. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. The Dallas Cowboys trying to wrap it up in the NFC East, and they'll do it with a victory, and they lead by 24. There's a look at Bob Whitfield, their number one draft choice, who's taken Mike Ken's place at left tackle. First down Falcons from the 11-yard line is Wade Wilson. Guns one perfectly into the arms of Pritchard up at the 33-yard line for a gain of 22 in a first down. Richard has had a big night tonight. The two circus catches that end up being out of bounds that don't count for anything, but he not only has caught the ball well, but he's taken some big shots after the reception and, and held on well. That's his seventh catch of the evening for 74 yards, and they've not been easy. Maybe his success probably is why we have not seen a whole lot of Andre Risen. I think they're taking him away and giving the single coverage to Pritchard, although that was zone, and he just hooked up in the right position. From the 33, under pressure, they set up a screen. This is Keith Jones, and he's close to a first down, tackled near the 43-yard line. Appears to be a little short of it. 120 to go in the third. Good read that time by Wade Wilson. Kenny Gant coming on the blitz, and Wade gives just enough ground to allow Jones to, to get out there and dumps him the ball. I, I've been impressed with Wade Wilson's work tonight. It's, it's not like he's some rookie that that we you know, don't think can play in this league. He's He's been doing this for a long time, but those are respectable numbers. In fact, they're well better than respectable, 22 of 30. 
Second and one at the 43-yard line as Wilson goes back. He fires an out. It's caught by Hill. He brings it in at the 37-yard line. Drew Hill. Looking over the numbers for this game, what was it, Drew Hill and his accomplishments past the age of 30? He has been a, a highly productive receiver uh, later in life. And this is a, an illustration of why. Look at the work and getting the right foot down in time. And they set up another screen to Jones, but this time it is sniffed out perfectly by Woodson. Loss of two. Hill again. There's Hill on the sideline, but look at the right foot. Look at him get it down. Let's talk about body control and, and presence and, and knowing exactly where you are in relationship to the sideline. That's that's beautiful work by Drew Hill. Hill is a guy as Nemers throws a flag Too many here. men in the field, on the defensive team, five yards, repeat first down. Looking at Steve Hurt's notes here, what, he had 138 receptions while he was in his 20s. Mm -hmm. Here we have it right here. And mm -hmm. 453 when he's in his 30s. Mm -hmm. Now, a football player's life, you have many more years in your 20s than you do in your 30s. And that is a... Uh, Talk about a late bloomer. Those early years with the Rams, it changed a little when you get into that run and shoot offensive use of an odd ladder. First and five, and this is uh, Pritchard making the catch, and that should be a first down, and it will also be the end of the quarter. Will somebody make it? <laughs> no, the back judge, back judge says incomplete. Take another look here. On a first and five. Good call. Touch the yep. ground. Sure did. And that official on the sideline to our camera right there was the only one who really had the vantage point and mm -hmm. correctly came in and made the call. End of the third quarter. It's Dallas 34, Atlanta 10. And we'll return with Monday Night Football after this word from our ABC stations. Navida. Choo-choo up at Stone Mountain, the park just east of Atlanta. Great tourist attraction. <laughs> what? Didn't quite catch that. What'd you say? Good morning, America? It was, I wish I were Miss America. Oh, all right. <laughs> we start the fourth quarter. It's second down and five. Falcons at the Cowboy... 32-yard line. Dallas up by 24. And Wade Wilson going all the way and complete. Intended for Ryzen. He looks for the flag and sees none. Larry Brown covering. Larry Andre Brown complaining that he was being interfered with by Andre Ryzen. Larry Brown playing on a pretty sore knee. He's had trouble with him for the past couple of weeks. He gets tied up man for man, number 80. 24 is Larry Brown. Larry Brown saying he was pushed off, but he was. That's just standard fare in the NFL. Uh -huh. yeah. it's, there will always be hand fighting between receiver and defensive back. Third and five at the 32-yard line. Look out. Wilson sacked at the 38. Leon Leck. And that's the, uh, the first sack tonight for the Cowboys. Leon came into the game tonight with two and a half sacks. And uh, Dave Wanstead telling us before the game, he's not sure that there's a better reserve defensive tackle in the game. Emporia State. Yep. Seventh yeah. round draft pick. A wee lad, Amir yeah. 6'6", 292. Hmm. They're very deep along the defensive oh. front. Very deep. Deep and young. And there's Jeffcoat having a yeah. tremendous year, and he's uh, barely been a factor tonight. Jim Jeffcoat in his 10th season. They've taken a first and five and turned it into a fourth and 11 and turned it oh. into giving the ball up. Haley. So Haley gets the sack, and they go the entire game without a sack and then pick him up back to back. This is called beating the soft corner. Charles Haley comes right around the soft shoulder of Chris Hinton, who turned and just mainlines it right to Wade Wilson. Gant is shaken up on the play with 14-18 remaining. 34-10, a big D. Yeah. 
Dallas takes over at the uh, 47, first and 10. Aikman pump fake. Aikman going deep to Harper. Incomplete. Tim McCire covering on the play. And good coverage it was to McCire playing it absolutely perfect. No lack of shyness on the part of the Dallas Cowboys. A 34 to 10 lead on first down. Go ahead and put it up in the air like that. Well, that's, just thinking the same thing. Hey, oh. Well, one thing about Jerry Glanville, you have to say, he asks for none yep. and he gives none. And, and he's taken his fair share of whippings and has said nothing about it. Yep. And, and doesn't like it when other coaches complain when he administers one. Second and ten, Emmett Smith. And Mitch Smith inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. He's tackled by Deion Sanders. So another tremendous night for Smith and uh, a forgettable night for Neon. Florida and Florida State getting it on. Watch him cover up the football. He knows he's in traffic. Dion trying to pull it out. He did. He got his hand on the ball. He got that left one in there. Emmett Smith does not surrender that ball lightly. Emmett Smith, that 17th touchdown uh, coming tonight, breaking Dan Reeves' mark. The current Bronco coach setting it 26 seasons ago. Emmett again. Oh, he's fun to watch. To everybody but Atlanta. Touchdown. There's number 18. You're seeing some great running, and you're seeing some horrific tackling. Well, Pro Bowl balloting is tomorrow around the NFL. And you're looking at a man who's just padding the ballot box because he was in anyway. <laughs> but he, this might make it unanimous. Emmett Smith. And I have nothing to add after what you said. Good running and horrific tackle. Lynn Elliott to the point after. Emmett Smith has gained 154 yards tonight. That's a 29-yard TD scamper. There's a little uh, altercation out on the field. But uh, nothing worthy of uh, our attention. 41-10, to 10, Dallas. Well, Jerry Glanville and the Atlanta Falcons involved in another, yet another, Monday night massacre. The last time we were here, 49ers beat them 41-3. to yeah, We were here for that. Yeah, and we're here tonight, and it's 41-10. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as Dan pointed out, Atlanta giving up an average of 4.8 yards per rush. And an average of 40-plus points per game when we're here. Atlanta, they've been the uh, kings of the blowout yeah, they, this year. Uh, both ways. Yeah, they, they won games by uh, 34 and 28, and they've lost games by 39, 38, 27, and whatever they lose by tonight. Not very consistent. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah. But it's kind of consistent with Monday Night Football this year. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy the way it's worked out. The margin of victory in our Monday night games, I don't have to tell fans of this package, has been huge. The hugest, in fact, in the history of the package. And we go back 23 years. And more. There's Vice Sikahema's uh, <laughs> alter ego, I suppose, trying to punch out the goalpost. But the margin of victory on a Monday night game this year has been 16.7 points. Wow. Good matchup. I mean, they've been teams that when you look at it going in, you're saying, this is this is good stuff. Yeah. Falcons last year in the playoffs. The Lions last year in the playoffs. Well, give me the hype award or whatever. I mean, next week we have a game that really means nothing in the standings. But I'm telling you, I cannot wait to be in Candlestick Park when Joe Montana comes back out onto the field. Been, That'll be uh, a moment. That, that is going to be tremendous. What, it's been two years since he's faced live bullets. Two years. Here is Sanders oh, I, I, pinned again. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I don't oh, know about that. Yeah, yeah he's coming out. Yeah, he's, he's got to come out. I don't think anybody touched him. Oh, and the whistle had not blown. That would have been a safety. This is a wacky play, but it's going to turn out to be a uh, <laughs> run back to the 28-yard line. The only the Dion could get involved in something like that. The only way you can end up in the end zone is if your momentum 
took you into the end zone. Your momentum in chasing the ball, and, and Dion looked like he fielded that ball cleanly and walked into the end zone. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson yelling, where is the whistle? That momentum, that, they would not say that that carried him in there. He kneels down, well, that was not close. been touched. No whistle is blown. Mm -hmm. And he looks up, sees the official looking at him, and he says, hey, I better get out of here, babe. That was a real gray area. I mean, Dion was running backwards. He was running backwards to get the football. Jimmy's got a good point. I mean, well, they would have blown a whistle right there had his momentum carried him into the end zone when he, when he, kneeled, when he knelt down. And when he didn't hear the whistle, that's heads up. But when you, let me pose this question. When you take a knee in the end zone, are you not surrendering? I mean, you are seeking protection, and you are ending the play when you take a knee in the end zone. I don't know. I look that at the should court. have been the end of the I, play either way. I don't know. The quarterback the, anymore isn't allowed to come back and take a knee and then come back up and, and throw the football. Well, I was trying to say, I don't know if there's a yeah, surrender I think clause Jim, in there or not. I think but Jimmy Johnson has an excellent point. We're going to go to the rule book on this piece. If you take it back and then put your knee down as opposed to just putting a knee yeah. down under any circumstances. I mean, the whole purpose of putting your knee down in the end zone is you're seeking yeah. protection. Exactly. Here's Ryzen, and he needs protection and doesn't get any from Larry Brown. I mean, if you allow a player to take a knee in the end zone and then come back out of the end zone, what's the purpose of taking a knee in the end zone? Sure. And there is a fully involved coach. And, uh... I think it might change when you carry the ball into the end zone on your own. Right. All right, we're, we're leaping through the book. Jerry Seaman, if you're watching, give us a call. Don't make it collect. The NFL's director of officiating. Oh, here's Keith Jones taking his way out to, or making his way out to the 37-yard line. It'll be third and one with about 12-10 to play. And Dallas comfortably in front, 41 to 10. Third and one. Wade Wilson throwing, and that's caught by Andre Risen. A double spin move. And after the 50, he goes for an Atlanta first down. Frank, don't you love to see a quarterback like that who throws the ball back to the inside of the field, allowing his receiver to catch it? and move upfield it, it doesn't sound like much but it's important instead of to the sideline he threw it back to the middle of the field and gives a guy like Risen a chance to do something with it and a beautiful job by Risen kept that knee off the ground that contact had been made first and ten at the 50 yard line Wilson throws Pritchard makes the catch avoids the tackle and picks up 20 as he is steered out of bounds at the 30-yard line by Kevin Smith. Richard right under the arms of James Washington coming up there for the big hit. Richard who's having a big night. Just stuck under the arms of Washington and he was gone. A couple of good moves. Saw rise in a moment ago. Look at this. That was uh, hardly textbook. Richard eight catchers tonight and look out and that's a big sack by Haley big in terms of yardage lost it's gonna be a 13 or 14 yard sack Haley's only had four sacks coming in to the night's game he's had a couple tonight but he probably has picked up double teaming more than any other Dallas Cowboy and Jim Jeffcoat has benefited from that I'm sure he has nine and a half sacks Tony Tolbert has eight and a half sacks as most of the offensive lines they have played have concentrated on Haley. Officially a 12-yard sack as they spotted at the 42. It's second and 22. It is swung out here to Michael Haynes. And Haynes goes down to the arms of a trio of Cowboys at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and 10. Bill Frayling uh, yeah, coming he, out of the game. He's another one of that offensive line that has a bad knee. He just couldn't make it, Frank. He yep. just took himself out of the ball game. Fralick and Hinton both will require knee surgery at the end of the season. And Mike Ken, the left tackle, was playing with a partially torn medial collateral ligament. Here's Wilson on third and ten. He has to get to the 20 to convert. And he's tackled at the 25-yard line by Mickey Pruitt. And it'll be fourth and five with 9.45 left in the fourth quarter. And the Cowboys up 41 to 10. 
you would be hard-pressed to find a football team that has had as much trouble in the training room as have the Atlanta Falcons. There's another look at Mike Ken on the sideline. We talked about the three defensive ends right. that they've lost, but we just now have got around to talking about an offensive line that's been, been very affected by the injury. Fourth and five, and they convert here as Pritchard makes his ninth catch of the game. Good for a first down. Takes it to the Dallas 14 tackle by Robert Williams. Bill Fralick. A lot of excellent offensive line. And when you consider that Fralick, Hinton, and Ken all on the same team, you can see why this club, this franchise, is, franchise has had a lot of offensive success in the past. I mean, that's, that is, that's better than most. This is Keith Jones for a gain of four to the ten he goes. Second and six. So the Falcons on their way to going six up and nine down, and they will close the season in Anaheim next week. Johnson's Cowboys go home and close against the Bears in what will be Mike Singletary's final game. Second and six. And Wilson guns it into the end zone incomplete. Intended for Pritchard. From just about this area where the Falcons have had a great deal of trouble this year getting the ball into the end zone. Conversely, the Cowboys, when they get down around the 10, inside the 10, they get it into the end zone over 80% of the time that they're down there. Third down and six. A lot of it, I think, goes with the run and shoot. We've talked about it so many times before. You don't have the benefit tied in. took the blitz right in the face and paid it and got the touchdown out as a result but it, he saw it coming from the left side and he took a big time hit great move by Ryzen two against Larry Brown let's take a look at this Jeff coat I believe the blitz came to the inside Woodson came and was picked up by Whitfield the left tackle and boy that's very indicative of the type of night and reflected the night had by Wade Wilson. He has thrown the ball really well. Price should pay though when you blitz, you're going to get single right. coverage out there. Larry Brown linked up with Andre Risen. It was a uh, no contest. Wilson paid the price, but Risen was there for him. Norm Johnson for the point after. Well, numbers can be screwy sometimes. Wilson is 30 of 41 for 342 yards. Numbers like that get you to the Pro Bowl, but it doesn't get your team anywhere. They're down 41 to 17. Sellout crowd, but uh, they're disappointed tonight because their Falcons are down by 24. The Dallas Cowboys expect an Atlanta onside kick, and thus they have nine men up within... Uh, a few yards of Norm Johnson at this point. And the sure-handed types. Including uh, guys like Michael Irvin and Alvin Harper are out there. And Atlanta making the shift. They don't always go with the onside kick. But this looks like they definitely will. A couple of oh, never bounces and then take that last high bounce and go for it. It's much easier to do on artificial turf. Has, to go, has to go 10 yards for Atlanta to make it pay off. And that went 10 yards. Coming up with it is Bruce Pickens. But what are they going to say? I'm not sure it went 10 yards. He, he's standing right on the 45. Was he in bounds? There's a flag down, among other things. I think they're offside. Atlanta. Larry Nimmer is telling us. Number 29 of the kicking team, offside. Mm -hmm. Five yards, re-kick. Re-kick. Joe Fishback. Would like to have that fish back. What the kickers work on is getting that ball to take a couple of low bounces and then take that high bounce. And as you can you can see the offside right there. Oh, that was a beautiful yeah. kick. Mm -hmm. Bruce Pickens. Oh, look at that job with the feet by Pickens. Mm -hmm. he took the high bounce. That's a 9.9. .9. Yeah. That's another 9.9 .9 that 
doesn't end up on the stat sheet. It's a funny thing, too, because uh, among other things, Pickens has the label of having terrible hands. He's dropped a lot of in would-be interceptions this season and last as well. Number one draft choice last year. He was like the fourth of the fifth player taken in the draft and signed for colossal money and yet hasn't yet cracked his way into the starting lineup, but with McKay and Sanders, a lot of talent. And when we looked at that replay, it was actually, it was 39. It was Pickens himself who was the guy offside, even though they had said 29, which gave us a chance to mention Joe Fishback's name for his friends and family. Well, but now you can take that Fishback. <laughs> <laughs> and I will. <laughs> I don't, I don't be, I don't want to be nitpicking. <laughs> <laughs> smells like a red oh, herring no. to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, we're floundering. I know. I understand. Now, if you were perched up here watching what we're looking at, <laughs> there's another flag. Now that ball was touched by a cowboy before it went 10 yards. Yep, that was Daryl Johnston. And again, Pickens is involved in the play. If a cowboy comes up and touches the ball before it goes 10 yards, it's a free ball. Exactly. They don't handle it. It should be a free ball. I, I would think that would be Atlanta's ball. I think Daryl Johnston comes up. See, there's Johnston. No he, chooses, he chooses to touch the ball before it goes 10. If Atlanta recovers the ball, that's got to be theirs. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Fishback's involved in this play here. He, oh, yes, he was. I knew he'd work his way in here somehow. <laughs> you mean he's back? Back on the hook. That was kind of a half-hearted first down signal by Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> there's a flag down here as well. <laughs> uh, Ray Hort wanted to know what's going on here. We have the kicking team offside again. Oh, That's boy. the second kickoff in a row, but the ball was legally touched by the receiving team, so we'll penalize the kicking team five yards and re-kick. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been Atlanta's ball had they not been offside. Exactly. That's the... But they committed the foul. Net, net result of that. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, not, Fishback was not in the net. Okay. No, 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 no. I want to make sure. I know. I know. <laughs> He's got his hand over the line. That's a, that's, that is really nitpicking up there. Mm -hmm. Just picking it once again. Pickens again. Yep. It's not just yeah. your feet. If your body's across the line, you're. Well, the uh, Cowboys will just continue to uh, try to reel this kickoff in. I'll stop it. With it. <laughs> the key thing, of course, is the catch. <laughs> <laughs> They've got me to the point. I don't care who gets it. <laughs> Somebody got it. Come on, guys. Kick off already. Fisher cuts eight here. Let's go. All right. I Johnson just can't be done. He kicks it out of bounds. Yeah, this is... Uh, 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 this uh, might be the worst series of kickoffs <laughs> this league has seen in a long time, yep. coupled with some of the worst announcing <laughs> of all time. <laughs> uh. Kick off, out of bounds, the ball will be put in play, 30 yards from the free kick line, first and 10 for Dallas. Thank you, thank you, oh thank you. Oh boy, thank you. <laughs> you ready for some football? <laughs> When's it going to start? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's, they, they've just invoked the mercy rule here. Dallas has it at the uh, at the 45, and uh, we have 7:56 remaining. Believe it or not, 41 to 17, Cowboys. Yep, that's next Monday night, uh, Candlestick Park in San Francisco. 49ers on their way, of course, to the home field advantage. They hope another Super Bowl title. Steve Young. Tremendous year. If you missed it at halftime, George Seifer telling us Young is going to play, but he wants to get Montana in for two quarters, roughly two quarters, next Monday. Sanders and the Lions against San Francisco Monday Night Football. First and 10, Dallas at the 45-yard line. 
And Emmett Smith picks up five. That's 159 yards. You know, Dan, let's go back. We talked about the Deion Sanders play before. We were looking for clarification in the rule book, and we're going to queue it up here. Here's the play again. Sanders goes back, fields the ball, and voluntarily takes it into the end zone, and then takes the knee. And that is accurate, uh, as we called it at the time. If you surrender yourself in the end zone, if you seek the protection of taking a knee, the play should have been over right there. That should have been a safety on the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. Dion, Dion sought the protection of the end zone by taking a knee. He stopped play and then came out. And Jimmy Johnson, who was very animated on the Dallas sideline, was uh, certainly justified in doing so. Second and five. That would have been the uh, fifth way that Deion Sanders has scored, right? <laughs> that's, that's, I didn't think about that. That's right. Yeah, Punt return, kickoff return, interception, and a reception. He hasn't rushed for a touchdown yet. He hasn't run a fumble in for a TD yet, nor has he, uh, I believe, had a safety. Given up a safety. Given I, up I, a I, yeah. That's a deduction, guys. I, yeah. <laughs> that's That has a minus sign in front yeah. of it. Yeah. Emmett Smith tonight. Now, how does he stand as he seeks his second consecutive rushing title up to this very second? Barry Foster has the lead, but Emmett is right there on his tail. And then you've got Thomas and Sanders and the rest. 18 more yards to catch Barry Foster, and each has one full game to play. And coming into tonight, it looked like Foster had a very comfortable lead. Third and three. Here's Smith. But here's the thing, too. Next to this, it'll be an interesting thing. Because why play Emmett Smith next? Well, yeah, the Dallas has the luxury of, you know, playing their guys and just keeping them a little sharp, knowing they're going to have the week off. Pittsburgh, meanwhile, even though they've clinched the division, might be in a situation where they have to win that game against Cleveland to get that bye week. And it's a 1 o'clock right. game. They're not going to know what's happened. So it's, a, it's an important game for Pittsburgh to win. Foster's going to see a lot of action. And yeah, Barry was shaken up yesterday, too. He was taken uh, off the field and mm -hmm. taken in for x-rays. And conversely, Dallas is playing Chicago, who's already out of the playoffs. The game affects no one at all, so they really have no pressure to even put up a good game. Yep. And Dallas plays a late game, so they're going to actually know in Dallas how many yards Foster will wind up with. And Demet Smith... Works his way to the 35-yard line. He is stopped there by Jesse Solomon. Well, I would have to say at this stage of the ball game, this is a just a concerted effort by, by Jimmy Johnson to get Emmett Smith the title. And I think he's going to go out of the game. Enough is enough. The franchise doesn't need to be in the ball game beyond this stage in a 41-17 contest. And most of those who've remained are Cowboy fans <laughs> unless he gets a big ovation. I think you touched on it, Dan. I think they're well aware that he is within that area and certainly contending for another rushing championship. Depending on what Barry Foster, of course, does next week. He's only five yards off of Barry Foster now. Second and one. And... That's not Herschel Walker, that's <laughs> Tommy Agee. Tommy Agee, and letting you know that Herschel's number didn't get retired. Emmett Smith, his season high had been 163 against the Eagles. Tonight he goes 174, scores twice, both on 29-yard runs. And uh, he and Foster head-to-head, -head, and here it is up to date uh, with one week to go. Foster leading Smith by five. What a great year Foster's had under Ron Earhart's offense. Steelers really roaring back this year. First and 10 Dallas at the 33 on the four minutes to go. 41-17 Cowboys. And here's a look at Curvin Richards, the backup to Emmett Smith, to the 31-yard line. So the Cowboys are going to set a uh, franchise record, 12 wins. They'll be 12 and 3 with a uh, potential to win 13. Onto the playoffs they go. Johnson in his fourth year, and he's taken his team just about to the top. And we'll, you know, we'll all know in a month or so. And unless we are dead wrong, and I don't think so, get used to this picture. The Dallas Cowboys give every indication of being a franchise that is going to be doing this to people for a long time to come. Yeah, this yeah. is the youngest team oh. in the game. There's a little over 26 years. Average. Kervin Richards again on second and long. 
to the 29-yard line. You don't want to hang the dynasty label on a team that hasn't done anything yet. And the Cowboys haven't done anything yet. Yep. But let's. this team will win for a long time to come. I, I don't see anything that could bring this team down in the near future. There are two D words that teams don't want to yeah, use. One uh, is dynasty, and the other is totally at the other end of the spectrum, disarray. disarray. <laughs> and stereo. <laughs> That's right. Well, you have to accomplish something before people should even toss the word dynasty around, mm -hmm. and that's something you have to keep in mind with this ball club. They had playoff experience last year. They want to take it to that next level. They're aggressive, hardworking, talented, and well-coached. Third and seven. Other than that, they don't have a lot going for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, the, uh, the Atlanta Falcons, they're going to have to regroup an injury rack season, but... They're going to be a mystery when next season begins. Jerry Glanville and company on their way to going six and nine. Two minute warning from the Georgia Dome. At the two minute warning uh, on fourth down and five, Lynn Elliott comes out to attempt a 46 yard field goal. Burline to hold. This is Jimmy Johnson not wanting to break the rhythm of what he would do in any ball game. And that one hits the upright. So Elliott misses, and Atlanta takes over. And we have 153 remaining, and the Cowboys are that much time away from the NFC East title. ABC's Monday Night Football being brought to you by Tots Blanc de Noir, the wonderful new taste for the holidays. By Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store. By Buick and your local Buick dealer. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Braun, makers of Flex Control, the world's first electronic shaver with a pivoting head. 153 to go by the Joe Tolliver comes into the game. Wade Wilson is done for the night. And, of course, Atlanta's been done for the night for some time. They're down 41-17. to 17. And Tolliver throws, and that's the first catch of the night made by one James Milling up at the 32-yard line. He's tackled there by Mickey Pruitt. Jerry Jones, owner of the Cowboys, down there uh, getting and receiving. Congratulations from Charles Haley and Thomas Everett. He built it, and they have come. <laughs> Victories. <laughs> the two, the two JJs, Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson. Tolliver throws, and as we said at the top, it's been those two guys and, and no jablonis. There's been no personnel director and no general man. These guys should get all of the blame or most of the credit. It's as simple as that. It's been Jones and Johnson. And right now they're getting all of the credit, and they deserve it. Well, in 89, when they looked over their, their football team and said, we want to change it, they said they looked around and said, what kind of an asset did we have? And they both agreed. It was Herschel Walker. Nothing against Herschel. They just got a bundle for him, and they went from there. 43 trades later, 29 of them. Plan B players coming in. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Is it your insinuation, Al, that a lot of other teams have jabloni? Well, it's just, I just feel like, I, I feel like Groucho Marx. I mean, that was kind of like the, the word that comes down with the duck tonight, right? Oh, I, <laughs> the, the $200 worth. <laughs> We just created one. <laughs> At the 47-yard line, Tony Jones was the guy who made that last catch, and Tony Jones is shaken up. So Dallas wins the NFC East, and we can update the playoff picture to the moment and simplify it. San Francisco home field advantage throughout. That said, Dallas week off, then they host a game the second weekend of January at home. Minnesota plays in that first round the weekend after New Year's, and they will host a game. New Orleans and Philadelphia have a chance to host games. New Orleans, simply by beating the Jets, will do it. And, and that's a likely scenario. Philadelphia still with a chance. Green Bay and Washington each with a chance to get in. Washington has the better chance, though if both win and Philadelphia loses, then Green Bay gets in. And Washington plays the Raiders 
uh, on Saturday and Green Bay plays on Sunday against Minnesota. But of those bottom two, one is in, one is out. One is in, one is out. Same here. Same here. You've got Buffalo, you've got Miami. Pittsburgh has clinched the division title. Nobody has been guaranteed a week off at this point. San Diego's in and Houston is in. So a lot's still going on. And, of course, Kansas City plays Denver this week at Arrowhead Stadium. Winner in, loser out. Uh, could you repeat the NFC again? I, uh, blah, 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 blah. Well, the AFC is simple with that Kansas City-Denver game. Tolliver taken down by Jim Jeffcoat. The spike by Jim Jeffcoat. Mm -hmm. And Tolliver, who already has a slightly separated shoulder, they uh, used that as a reason why Wilson even got the start last week. Slow and arising. Michael Irvin. <laughs> Mike and his, Mike, Michael, I was worried with you, but he is a football player. Yeah. He brings it every time. Damn it. He is the franchise. Second and 20. Whoa. And that's the, the catch by Drew Hill. What's that for a little quick penetration there? Who was that came flying up in there? Was that Jimmy Jones? We have Led, I think, again. You know, we have we have Jimmy Johnson, the coach. We have Jerry Jones, the owner. And we have Jimmy Jones, the player. Yep. This is a confusing configuration of talent. You can, call me, you can call me Ray. You can call me Jay. And we can call this the last play of the game. Maybe. That's incomplete, and uh, the clock has gone down to zeros all the way around. What a job they've done at Dallas. NFC East is theirs for the first time since 85. Johnson and Jones. Well, we go to San Francisco next week. Joe Montana in action. We'll talk to you then. Detroit against the Niners. Here is 41-17 Cowboys. Till next week, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Good night from Atlanta.